Well, they say follow the money, but today Jude is going to actually follow the water. Water from in all the way out to steam out in the boiler room. Now, before we get started, please like all of our stuff. Share all the content YouTube loves uh, when you share those things for us. And today on The Boiling Point, we'll be hanging with Jude. What we thought we would do today is really get into some, um, just some elementary stuff about the steam system and the boiler room, about how the actual system works, starting from the water coming in. And thought it would be great that Jude walk us through the process here um, of how things work in a boiler room. So why don't you take it away there? Well, the path of the water is always a great way to look at the boiler room because a lot of your troubles sometimes involve getting water into the boiler. So understanding exactly the point of water entry all the way through the system is a great exercise in your own boiler room. Mm -hmm. So we got a water softener here with city water coming in. Um, that's our first line of defense against scale, first step in our water treatment. So this is softening, removing calcium, magnesium, and we're taking that softened water then to a recovery unit. Now not all systems will have a recovery unit, but if you've got a lot of makeup in your process for your boiler, this is going to help extract heat out of what's going to drain and it's going to boost that temperature on the water's way to the deaerator. How important is like water pressure um, coming in? Uh, well, it's critical because if we don't have water, enough water pressure to get into the deaerator, mm -hmm. deaerator is going to be at 7 PSI typically. But any valve, anything along the way saps some of that pressure. So one thing that we like to have is actually a gauge on our incoming water. Adequate water pressure is important for your softener to work right, and if we don't have enough water pressure and volume capacity, we're going to run out of water at the boiler eventually. Okay. So then we're going over here. Yeah, so we've got our heat recovery system. Okay. And make a long story short, this is taking water that would go to drain hot, and we're warming our incoming water with that. What so, typical temperature are we getting it to here? Uh, it's not unusual to see a 20, 25 degree rise. And okay. I know that's not like going to get it to boiling, sure. but it's free energy. So right. you may be having to add cooling water for your blowdown otherwise. So it eliminates cooling water and recovers the energy. So it's sort of a two-sided benefit there. Okay. And then we step over and we actually are starting to put a little bit of chemical onto the water here after the soft water. Yeah, chemicals, you know, softener is the first step of our water treatment program. Um, chemicals are a second important step. They're helping keep solids in solution, eliminate oxygen and whatnot. So this chemical setup is pumping the chemical over to the deaerator and to piping points um, for application of those chemicals to the water. Okay, and then it moves on over to the deaerator. Yeah, so we're, we're lucky to have a deaerator here. Not everybody has a deaerator. You may have a vented feed tank, but a deaerator actually is part of the chemical program. It helps remove the oxygen, so we use less chemicals. Um, and it also increases the water temperature a greater amount, so there's less stress on the boiler. Um, so it's going to have a vessel to hold and maintain a certain amount of water available for the boiler, and we've got pumps to, to motivate that water to whatever boiler is running at the time. So we actually have about a 25 degree uh, rise there, then what's going on here? Yeah, once the water goes into the deaerator, it's going to go from whatever temperature, 40 degree city water or 75 degree out of the recovery unit, and we're going to use steam, that temperature and turbulence to bring that water temperature up to typically about 225 degrees on a deaerator. Okay. A little bit cooler for a feed tank, maybe 185. Okay. And so now the water's prepared, and now we've got to pump that over to Yep, we're going to pump it boiler. over to the boiler. So here our feed water is coming from our boiler feed pumps, and in this case it goes up and through an economizer. Mm -hmm. um, anything we can do to boost that water temperature and when it's going into the boiler is basically free energy recovery. Um, so that's just less work the burner has to do to get it up to the boiling temperature. So we've got a control valve to throttle the amount of water going in and that in turn is controlled by a level control head. So this is just one of many styles that we can use to maintain the proper water level in the boiler. 
um, also serves as a limit. So if we don't have sufficient water in the boiler, it's not going to run. So the water goes here into the side of the boiler, and this is really kind of a critical point. Uh, we've got a check valve here so that when we put the water in the boiler, it stays in the boiler so mm. we can boil it and send it the right direction. Right. If that check valve fails, we'll send water back to the deaerator because this is a higher pressure if the pump shuts off. Um, it's going to cause big problems over there and here. So uh, check valve health is important. Yep. And uh, it goes in there and then it's up to the burner. And as far as the, the water um, inside the boiler, um, really critical on the levels. So there's obviously things in place to be able to make sure that you have the right level of the water. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, people say, oh, well, if you don't want water, low water in your boiler, keep more water in it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and you could raise the water level in your boiler. But what people don't realize is that the level that we have in a boiler is very carefully controlled because the higher it is, the more likely we are to actually suck water with the steam out into the system. And if we run it lower than we need to, then we're going to be more prone to tripping on low water mm -hmm. if there's any upset. So on a boiler, the normal water level variation is normally going to be, you know, an inch and a half, two inches tops. On a deaerator or some other tank application, I mean, water level could go up and down six inches, it wouldn't matter. But if you're six inches high, if you're at the top of the sight glass, I guarantee you you're pulling water with your steam out into the system and that's that's not beneficial for anything you're trying to do. Well, what we did last time is we actually talked about the water that was coming in, uh, you know, from our city water coming in, and we went through the entire operation getting, the, getting it to the boiler. Now today we're going to heat that water up, and we obviously need to start with something coming in from the city, if you will, and that's gas. Yep, got to start with gas. Um, sometimes that's the end result, but yeah, that's here true. we're starting with the gas. Uh, <laughs> You know, so we've got our city supply, we've got a fuel metering system here so we can actually see how much fuel we're burning, handy little tool. So our gas line comes down, we've got a manual shutoff valve, so that's we're using that for lockout, tag out. If we have any questions about the safety of the boiler, we can always close that. Now we talked real quick, we talked about um, the feed water and pressure. Yeah. Um, how important is pressure with gas? Oh yeah, gas is pretty important um, and the pressure is critical because if we've got too much pressure, obviously we could have a malfunction in the gas train. If we don't have enough, we're not going to make enough heat to do the job. So yeah, it's good to have a gauge on the inlet of the building. We don't have one local here, but we've got one right on the outlet of the meter mm. to verify that. Um, we actually going through our shutoff valve do have an inlet pressure gauge here. So that, that's a gauge, not a switch. So that's not a safety per se, but it's something we want to look at, make sure it's normal. Because, you know, if your boiler's rumbling in the winter and you look, you may have insufficient gas pressure because mm. everybody's pulling down the main. So sure. as it's getting cold, we're going to need, you know, that's something that could affect your system. Sure. Um, but we do have safeties on here because gas is flammable. We need to regulate it, make sure it stays within safe limits. So we've got a low gas pressure switch and a high gas pressure switch and the auto flame system actually has a sensor so we can actually get an analog value of what our gas is doing at any time and mm -hmm. help you troubleshoot and whatnot as well as prove yeah some gas yeah proving. and it also does valve uh, gas and valve proving mm -hmm. so we've got safety shutoff valves and a vent valve so so that three double block and vent is what allows us to just basically guarantee we're not getting gas in the burner when we don't want okay. gas in the burner because if we fill the combustion chamber up with gas, we, we've got a, a bad scenario there. Vent, pretty um, important. So yeah, the vent, you know, it goes through the roof. We need to make sure it doesn't fill with water. You know, stuff goes wrong with the vent too. True. So True. Um, we need to keep an eye on those things. We've also got a smaller pilot gas line because we always start a big fire with a little fire. You know, everything starts with a match. You know, start with a minor increment and build your way up. So our main fuel valves, we've got another shutoff valve. That shutoff valve gives us the ability to test all these components mm. with, uh, without the risk of gas going into the burner. So if we need to, to change an actuator and, and verify that it opens or something like that, if we have that closed, we're guaranteeing we're not sitting gas downstream to the burner. Okay, so why don't we go around uh, the front of the boiler yeah. here. So we're at the front of the boiler and now we have the gas that's getting to the burner. Now whether it's a limbs field or a power flame, 
Gas pressure is important. These things want a certain pressure, if I'm yes, saying that that's correct. correct. You're going to need a certain amount of pressure to make rate or burn at the advertised BTU input. And if you don't have enough, it's going to be um, below the boiler's capacity. And, um, you know, it, it doesn't have to be just enough. It doesn't have to be enough. It has to be just right. So, mm. you know, your high gas pressure, your low gas pressure, the sensors, all those are about getting the exact amount of gas that we need for whatever heat input we're looking for. Okay. Um, so we've got a modulating valve down here, um, a butterfly valve that throttles the gas according to the flow, because sure. it's like your car, it's not on off. If you drive with your foot mashed down or the ignition off, you know, your car's not gonna last long. So we modulate the firing rate as we need the heat. Um, okay. To burn that gas, we're gonna need air. Um, so we've got an air inlet assembly here because we're bringing room air, we're mixing it with the gas in the burner for burning. And mm. um, well, something too with this air that's so important is that it also kind of cleans out all the gas that can be in a, into a boiler. As that's well. correct. Yeah. Before we ever light the burner, we're going to run that air, and that basically is just evacuating any gas that could be bleeding through. Typically, that's not a problem, but for safety's sake, we always start off with uh, you know a good purge on the boiler before a light off. Right, so this thing gets fired up and now we are going down the Morrison tube and we are creating steam. Yeah, we're heating the metal, the metal's heating the water, the water's heating the world. And up here is our uh, yep. steam that's actually going into the plant. Yep, we got our steam takeoff, that's usually the big pipe coming off the top. Uh-huh, yeah, that is usually. <laughs> And it's, uh, it's actually going to the plant and you actually have shut off valves, of course, right there. One of the things I do want to touch real quick is um, just some safeties, if you will. And on top of the boiler or in the system, there's, a, there's sure. relief valves that's protecting for the pressure. Sure. If there's one thing about boilers, it's got to have its safeties. We talked about the low gas, mm -hmm. high gas pressure. Well, this is a pressure vessel, so it's got its own limitations as well. So we're gonna have operating pressure limits, high pressure limits, and then we're gonna actually gonna have vent valves that will dump, uh, relief, uh, relieve that steam. If uh, for some reason everything goes wrong and it fires more than it needs to, it's gonna dump that steam out the roof to a safe point of discharge. You know, controlling mm -hmm. all those, all those limits and switches come back to mm -hmm. a flame safeguard sure. control because you got to have a brain in charge of the operation and, and Richie's not going to stand around here all day and tell it what to do. So we've no, got to have a control to do it. I wouldn't and, know what uh, to tell it. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> so there's scanner components, um, there's air switches, there's water level, there's just a whole variety of things. The sure. neat thing about this is it's checking every single one of those multiple times a second. I just don't have that attention span. Yeah. Well, so. they can check all the boiling points and all the different yeah, weekly boiler true. tips that you do to really get into some detail of some of these things that um, that that are just little intricacies of the boiler. So, well, uh, Jude, always um, a pleasure. Appreciate all that you do for us. Uh, Jude, Boiler University instructor. Make sure you sign up and come and meet this dude because he has got a wealth of knowledge. And we'll see you next time on The Border Point.